After leaving the Rebels Asylum, I walked and snuck around regime installations for what felt like weeks on end. I ran cold camps at night, so as to not attract unwanted attention from regime scouts. Though after a couple of days, my rations were starting to dwindle. I had to do something, and soon, or run the risk of starvation. I heard a truck roll past where my lean-to structure was set up and decided to investigate where it was going. The truck rolled up to a relatively small base. It wasn't big enough to be a camp for slave labor, but I was unsure if it was a barracks, or worse a training facility that converts normal people into joining the regime, either through torture or brainwashing. As I was surveying the facility, I heard some leaves rustle behind me. Stricken with panic, I reached for my sword and turned, ready to draw at a moment's notice. I could see nothing but I was fairly certain that something was hiding from me in the woods close by, either in fear of me or provoking me to pursue it for an ambush at its convenience. I stayed my ground, sword at the ready with beads of sweat dripping down my face. I heard the leaves rustle again. I don't know if I was relieved or concerned that I wasn't imagining something skulking in the shadows. I felt my hand tremble in a mixture of fear and anticipation against my sword's handle. At this point, it was a standstill between me and whatever was evading me in the woods. Time seemed to freeze. Then the stillness was broken by a low whimper. It was at this point I hesitantly ventured from my spot to investigate the source of that noise. I traveled in the direction of the murmur, but could not see anything. I waited, hoping to hear another indication of where the source was, but heard nothing. It was as if it was toying with me. I turned to continue surveying the base when I heard a much louder wail. Whatever made that sound was in trouble but I still didn't know what it was. I contemplated whether it was worth it to risk exposing my position to the neighboring regime encampment to aid whoever or whatever it was that was making those noises. Against my better judgment, I returned to my pursuit of the noise. I rushed toward the source of the last sound with my sword drawn, ready for combat if need be. I reached a road and saw a small group of regime soldiers were transporting a medium-sized crate. I assumed that whatever made that noise was in that crate. Unfortunately, I could not confront the soldiers at that time due to limited cover on the road. I made use of my time by analyzing the routes of the guards monitoring the outer walls and the patterns of the searchlights within the compound just in case I needed an alternative route or entrance into the facility. I waited for the cover of night before I continued my venture to aid the captive creature. I snuck into a loading dock for the building. Thankfully, the area was not guarded as heavily as the main grounds. I weaved in between the trucks trying to get an idea of where the captive I heard earlier had been taken to. The one truck I saw had been recently unloaded. There was a trail of what had to have been hair or fur leading from the truck into the building. Whatever it was, it was either shedding uncontrollably or leaving me intentional clues. The door had what appeared to be a retinal scan lock on it. Assuming the guard patrolling the loading dock had access, I subdued them and used their eye in the scanner. 
I was granted access and cautiously ventured into the building. The building had well-lit white hallways. Surprisingly, I could not see any sense of guards or any other people in the wing I was in. There were some security cameras, but for some reason, they were not turned on. I continued to follow the sporadic trail of hair through the hallways. This trail abruptly stopped in front of a padlocked warehouse door. I drew my sword in order to break the lock. There's, There's no, no need, need for, for that, that warrior. The, the lock, lock is just, just for show. She used the sword and simply lift the door, door open. I frantically searched around me to assess where that voice was coming from. There was no indication that anything else was in these hallways, or on this floor for that matter. Who are you? And how do you know that the door is unlocked? I am a doubt. I have telepathic abilities, which is why you can hear me but not see me. Were you who I reached out to in the woods when they took me away? Shocked to hear this, I acknowledged that I was in the woods when the doubt was hauled away by the regime troops. Being unfamiliar with what a doubt was, I did not know what I was in for. Despite my skepticism, its words were reassuring that if it meant me harm, it probably had the capacity to do so whether locked up or otherwise. I lifted the door open to see the crate I saw hauled off earlier. I searched the room for a key to open the box and free the doubt inside. I eventually found a key rack and began to test key after key on the container's lock. Partway through trying the keys I found, I asked the doubt why the regime would want to capture it. Sadly, it's for my mental powers. They've forcibly taken several of my brothers and sisters away to use them for brainwashing new trainees for the accursed regime. I feared the worst, knowing that the regime now had installations that could actively convert people into puppets for their agenda. Is there any way to reverse this process? Yes, yes but, but I found, found it takes longer, longer to fix a mind and to break it. What guarantee do I have that you won't do the same to me after I free you? Because, because I want nothing, nothing to do with these games. games. Besides, if, if I, I wanted, wanted to, I could, could have done so while you were gingerly staking out this facility, facility and you would have been none the wiser. Thankfully, my hypothesis about its demeanor was accurate. Whatever this doubt character is, it would no doubt be a valuable ally in the fight against the regime. And if there were, in fact, more of them out there under the control of the regime, I would be a fool not to have some semblance of protection from their psionic attacks. Before testing the last key on the key ring, terrible thoughts concerning the doubt's capture entered my head. If this doubt has these kinds of powers, how was it captured so easily by regime flunkies? Is the regime onto the activities of the Republic? Are they resorting to psychic espionage to gather their information now? It was at these remarks that the doubt chimed in. I will admit my capture was a test. A test of your willingness to pursue your goals and what tactics you would use to rescue your son from these tyrants. You could have killed the guard at the loading docks, but the fact that you spared his life shows you have no interest in resorting to senseless slaughter to get what you want. As far as the Republic is concerned, we are, in fact, aware of its existence. My heart sank upon learning this. I may have single-handedly doomed the Rebel Sanctuary by falling for this creature's ruse. Worry not. My brothers and sisters who are under the manipulation of the regime are only focused on those that have already been captured. If anything, they try to provide camouflage to refugees if taken on scouting work. We are a peaceful species. But the fact that the biggest use us in this manner for nothing more than petty squabbles over money and land is inexcusable. So it was true. There was a force that knew about the Republic's existence. Thankfully, they were not interested in unveiling their location to the regime. For now, anyway. I opened the lock on the cage, freeing the doubt from its self-imposed prison. 
What emerged was a fusion of a Russian blue cat and an Australian cattle dog. My expectations were something a little bigger and potentially more intimidating due to the size of the cage. But this was just a little bigger than a typical domestic cat with the demeanor of a show dog. The doubt seemed to sense my skepticism upon its emergence from the container. What? I like having my spacious accommodations. Enraged by this remark, I impulsively lunged for the doubt and caught it by the scruff of the neck. Is this some sort of game to you? People are dying out there! And you're concerned with whether or not there's someone here to fluff your pillow? How dare you make light of- Rest assured, I take this matter more seriously than most of your kind. Or mine. It's just that I'm so small in the grand scheme of things, and can only do so much by myself. This remark really hit home. Up until now, I had been living as best as I could in solitude, and biding my time, waiting for an opportunity to strike at the regime. I knew that I couldn't take on the entire regime by myself, but I had a hope that there were stragglers that I could work with against their administration amongst the ruins. I released the doubt and promptly apologized. I should have been more thankful that there was any semblance of cooperation from it to begin with. So what happens now? Hmm? I was unsure how to answer. We had to escape the installation, but that was going to be the easy part. As far as what move to make after our departure, I still had no clear-cut direction. My main drive was getting my son back, but who knew where he was? or if he was even still alive. It was at this point that I recalled the psychic link that the doubt shared. Can you get in contact with any nearby doubts that might have any insight on where my son is? I'll try. But I need an image of your son to pass along to them. Do you happen to have a photo on hand? I pulled out my wallet, but the photo I had in there was a little dated. It was taken during his ninth birthday party. It brought back many happy memories of a much simpler and less chaotic time. Hopefully this would be recent enough for them to work with. I presented the photo to the doubt. He took mere seconds to scan the image, then tightly closed his eyes and began to meditate. <laughs> I don't think I can ever begin to fathom how communicating telepathically works, but it did not seem like he was getting any recipients to his message. After two minutes, the doubt reported his findings. We found your son. Your son is alive and in a barracks two miles northeast of here. The first part of his message relieved me, but the second half worried me. What was my son doing in a regime barracks installation? Unless he was... <laughs> the Suburban Samurai A radio drama written and narrated by Don Rosenberger also starring Jacob Hilty as The Doubt. The music used in this episode of Suburban Samurai was composed by Bobby Prince, Do, and Nobu Oimatsu.